Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Smart With Your Money Live. I am Chase Peckham. I am the Director of Community Outreach and Education at the San Diego Financial Literacy Center, the education arm of Debt Wave Credit Counseling. And as always, I am joined by my cohort, Felipe Aravalo. Welcome to all of those who have joined us, uh, Katie and everyone else. Hello there. Happy rainy Southern California. Actually, I think maybe everybody's getting rain except Florida, but it is unusually rainy and windy here in uh, the southernmost west part of California. And um, we're just trying to stay warm. And what better way to do that than discuss recessions and credit card debt? Super fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, not always the, the biggest uh, fun and exciting thing, but it's a reality that you know, is is just part of personal finances. So it's important to learn as much as possible. Um, I think the, these topics scare me as much as the rain scares my dog. And, <laughs> you know, it's definitely worth talking and what things you might be able to look out for, what trends we see are happening and, and what can you do to avoid falling into that trend uh, is all going to be in part of today's presentation. So We'll get started first, real quick. What is a recession? We hear it all the time. We hear the term being thrown around. Are we using it correctly? So a recession is a significant widespread and prolonged downturn in economic activity. This isn't gonna turn into a econ class, I promise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not qualified to teach something like that. But a, a common rule of thumb is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, gross domestic product. So basically, the economy shrinks two consecutive quarters. And there's obviously a much more complex get in the weeds type of definition and uh, lots of other markers and things. If you like want to go to sleep, for then the we can get part. into that. <laughs> right. And we got to bring someone else to do it because this is as far as I as I could could explain it. But, you know, so that's what a recession is. You know, we've seen it, uh, it happened in the past and, you know. Just recently too, not too long ago. Yeah. So are we in a recession? No, we're not technically in a recession. So um, there's there's that. You know, it's it's a, a a positive in that we're not there. It is trending in that direction, uh, but we're not in a recession at the moment. Fourth quarter of last year, which is the last of most recent available quarter, the economy still grew 2.9 percent. Not a big number. Uh, quarter three, 2022, the economy grew uh, 3.2 percent. So it it's declined. Slower. It's slowing, uh, but we're not there yet. Um, and and I say yet, you know, but we're not there. It's not yeah. technically a recession. The economy is slowing, and that all has to do if you go back and and watch the swim live for interest rates and inflation, and inflation, yeah. and all that. You know, that'll kind of you'll see that there's a method to our madness, and these are somewhat linked to one another. <laughs> these swim lives and these presentations that we do, but that kind of all that leading into this, um, the Fed increasing the interest rates causes spending to go down, causes the economy to slow, and we're just hoping they find a really nice balance in point. Right, and the thing to understand is that these are things that are really out of our con control as consumers. Right. Uh, we, but there are things that we can do to help protect ourselves. Right. As a as a single consumer, there you can't stop or create a recession regardless of right. what you do, unless maybe you're like a really ultra super rich Jeff Bezos uh, type of person. He might be able to tilt the scale a little uh, doing things here and there. But as as a normal everyday consumer, it, it, we're just kind of how can we protect ourselves in the event that a recession does take place? That's right, um, because there are side effects of these things. Um, Someone's asked, us. where can we research the numbers? Uh, a lot of the Federal Reserve banks put out reports. I have yeah. some stats. Most of my stats in this case came from the New York Federal Reserve. 
numbers. Um, you'll see some charts from them here in a second, but um, I would search the, the Federal Reserve uh, banks and their different reports that they put out. Um, and it is very exciting that we are not in, in a recession. So uh, we're not, but the word is, is coming up a lot. Yeah. So if you're so, watching the news, depending on what channel, depending on what source. Right. Is one coming? Well, interest rates were increased by the Fed to cool inflation, so it has slowed the economy. They may increase interest rates, interest rates yet again. Um, that'll tilt it even further to slow the economy. Right. So s- some economists do believe that we may be approaching, and I guess it depends on which one you're talking to. Uh, I've seen some consensus as much as possible, as much as economists. I thought, you know, some of us disagree a lot. You should see how much economists disagree. Yeah, they, they disagree can't. quite a bit. They must not have a very friendly uh, conference when they go to conferences. Um, well, but, the housing market slowed a lot, so that has a lot to do with with it. And there, there's right, and then there's related local economies compared to the national economy. So your area right. may be uh, slowing faster than others. Um, you know, it 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 just. The housing market slows at different rates in different parts of the country, all those kinds of things. So some economists do believe we may be approaching a mild recession. You get some that you talk to and say there's a big recession coming, and you get others that say, no, nah, we're, we're going to dodge it. Um, so it, it really, there could be, there's a wide range there um, of, of what it might be. Jobs being automated. Yeah, it, it's all, it's all such a big, elaborate moving machine that um is, is there's so many moving pieces and one thing can affect another thing in ways that you know sometimes we don't really necessarily know so um you know it, it is is one coming it depends on who you ask um basically who knows what will happen uh stay tuned but if you have if a we all knew ball, we'd all be in much better financial shape i was gonna say if you have a crystal ball um let us know and let us know which way it's going to go so that we can uh, plan accordingly but you know there's things everyone could do so how much credit card debt is there has this caused uh, an increase in credit card debt so this is again according to the federal reserve bank of new york they have this great little chart that they put together using equifax data um you'll notice that all debts are on the rise have been on the rise for for a little while here there was a little bit of a dip in 2020 and it, they have and we just, all know why that is and they've all just uh interest rates were low too very you know, it, it it was it was you know favorable borrowing and that kind of thing so everything kind of dipped and then we have just been on an upturn so um it is definitely on the rise. This is all of them. These things are student loans, which, you know, if you watched our last uh, Swim Live, you, you know, you saw info on that one. And we're waiting on Supreme Court still hearing arguments and whatnot. Um, other debts, these are the credit cards. And they are on the rise, unfortunately. Um, so, but how bad was it? How bad was 2022? I wish I could tell you it was all nice and uh, nothing bad happened. But the direct uh, reflection um, how of what was going on in our economy, though. Yeah. In fact, credit card debt rose $130 billion from quarter four 2021 to quarter four 2022. So in that year in between, credit card debt went up $130 billion. Wow. Sixty-one billion alone in quarter three. That was a pretty. That was a, a really bad quarter. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it, it's causing news and and our presentation. We schedule these way way in advance, so the timing came out perfectly. That you know it's in the news right now because it it it's just all kind of happening. But yeah, one hundred and sixty-one billion in the third quarter alone. Um, And that was, if you remember back, the recession was really spiking, interest rates were really jumping up all of a sudden, and it just kind of caused this perfect storm, uh, if you will. So it was a really tough 2022 
for credit cards and for Americans and credit card. Well, not for credit card companies, but for yeah. <laughs> consumers with credit cards. Yeah, not for the credit card companies. Um, although it could come back if it gets too bad for the consumers, it can turn around and then become bad for the credit card companies. Right. So are we like at historically bad numbers? Yeah, unfortunately, as far as debt load goes, uh, the total outstanding credit card balances, this is a chart, again, from the New York Federal Reserve, um, from, two th from, I was going to say 2000 something, no, from 1999 to today, um, seasonally adjusted, if you'll notice, um, we're really going in the wrong direction here. There was a really, we mentioned, uh, 2020 downturn. And yep. then we're just people were at home. They couldn't go anywhere. They were paying off debt. They were getting relief from the government for Interest the most part. Were down. Interest rates were way down. So it was all in a good area where people were paying money back and not using it. Yeah. Uh, and in homes, taking equity, paying down. Right. That's uh, all kinds of different. Things. And now we're coming back out and people are doing stuff and they're wanting to enjoy themselves. Yeah. Uh, like revenge yeah, travel. We're humans. COVID revenge. I, there's a term for it. I forget what. Yeah, it is. COVID revenge. COVID revenge travel. Um, yeah. Like I'm looking to go on another road trip, but let, let's do this. Let's get out there. Um, you know, it, but it's definitely um, now at a level. And if you notice, though, it was steadily rising before COVID. Yes. So we can't necessarily just blame COVID. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it it. It was on the. It was in the heading in the wrong direction already. But um, as we've seen this through throughout time, there are ebbs and flows to our economies, and we get too far one way, and then we go the other way, and back and forth. So this is something that is not altogether out of. It's not altogether unusual. No, there's definitely ups and downs, and and the, and there will be again. But in general, over the last quite a while, Americans have been increasing kind of like in a steady upwards uh, trajectory there. Yeah, I mean, um, you get back to the 80s, 90s, when credit was, people were not, they were not um, you didn't taught to it. use debt. Right. They weren't taught to use credit products. And so it is our generations that are, that's really where it started, that we started to live on credit. And that's where it's, that that debt load and by the way it's our government's kind of leading the charge that way right our spending uh as 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 a as a national and states uh they have a way of spending as well and going and the debt load is pretty crazy yeah it, it's it, it's kind of and it's not just you remember from a couple of charts ago it's not just credit card debts we're increasing right. our debts in other just, things student loans, mortgages, car loans. I mean, I've seen videos of people bragging how high their car payment is. Like, why are you bragging? That's bragging, about that? yeah. Hey. Not really what I'd be bragging about. Um, you used to brag about the car. Now you're bragging about the car payment. This doesn't make sense. Um, <laughs> that's why some of these TikTok things, they just don't make sense to me. Um, I heard a trend like TikTok made me do it or something was one of the professors said that I was presenting yesterday. Um, person, Bianca. Um, but yeah, it, it's definitely bad. Um, you know, really quick question. Uh, yeah. It's a good one by Bianca, and it asks: don't, don't the credit card companies have debt insured? Not necessarily insured, but they do forecast and do budgets based on knowing how much delinquent debt they're going to have. They're going to have. They're going to have. So they it is planned for uh, when it comes to their bottom lines. Um, so. And, and knowing how much they're going to have to pay out in bills that are in money that is just delinquent and money that is fraud and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, but are they delinquent? We're increasing debt, but can people afford it? Unfortunately, this is, and you'll notice this is like a different kind of chart, but this is how many people are, um, or the percentage of credit cards that are past due more than 30 days past due and you've seen you know this is uh 08 09 um and then there's been a steady nice decline and then a really big decline here in towards the end of 2021 but it is creeping back up so we couldn't stay at historically low levels forever 
Um, but um, it is now rising back up towards back towards the pre-pandemic levels. If it kind of tapers off and gets back to this little plateau that it was at before, that could be a sign that you know it, it, we're, we're going to figure this out. If it continues its quick rise like it did in 08, 09, we're going to start seeing some some more financial hardships, and, and this is kind of an indicator that the financial hardship is already there. So hopefully it plateaus and it doesn't keep going up. Um, some credit card delinquencies are, are inevitable. And if you're down near this historic low, then we're doing okay. But if it just kind of keeps going up, um, we could see that it could be a sign that Americans have overstretched on, on their credit and, and, and that kind of, that could be bad for a lot of people's personal financial situation. You don't want to be delinquent. That's going to have a really big adverse effect on your credit score. Um, it's going to make it a lot harder to get other loans, credit cards, or whatever it may be. You really want to do your best to avoid that situation. Right. And you got to remember credit cards too, as well. They, the companies, I mean, they sell the debt if it's delinquent. And then you have third party uh, creditors that are coming after you to to try to clean that up, and so they'll pay pennies on the dollar. So it it's a constant game. Yeah. So, what if there's a recession? What do we do? You know, we can't. We mentioned we can't really go and change the economy ourselves, um, but a recession could lead to an even bigger increase in credit card debt and a much bigger increase in the debts and delinquencies. So, you know, as individual consumers, um, you know, we got to see that, that that is coming and not fall into the trend, do our best to avoid falling into that cycle of debt. And, and you know, so what can we do? Start a budget. Um, if you don't have a budget, start a budget. If you notice your credit card debt increasing, you know, try and start a budget and, and, and just kind of stop that in its tracks. Um, you know, if, if the credit card debt um, is already there, explore the different repayment options that are available, whether it's by yourself or through a debt management plan. A lot of the problem um, has, you know, with those credit card debts is that interest rate is variable. So your interest rate is much higher than it was a year and a half ago on those variables. So if you're carrying a balance, especially as your balance starts to increase and becomes a large balance, that increased credit card debt can definitely be a hindrance. And then it can get really hard where you're just making payments, spinning your wheels, but not getting any closer towards that final debt free. If you're financial concern is is credit cards and the interest rates and not making any progress i would highly encourage a, a debt management plan um at least looking into it at least looking into it and exploring what those fixed lower aprs might do to your repayment period um because that's usually the biggest benefit to a debt management plan and get you out in three to five years and, and at least you know and they're fixed that. which we don't see today yeah um you could call and, and talk to your creditors and, and uh, have payments negotiated. That is something that, that can be hap that can happen. Um, do, yeah, sometimes they'll offer hardship problem or hardship programs. They're usually available for a short period of time, but very uh, short. six month type thing, or reduce interest rates for a hardship or reduce payments. But you definitely don't want to avoid talking to your creditors. Right. That's not gonna help anything. They may have a program available that wasn't available previously. So you wanna take the time, talk to your lenders and, and explain the situation and see if there's something that they could do. You don't wanna end up in that category that ended up delinquent, um, you know, refinancing, although depending on when you took out the loan that could significantly increase your interest rates and things like that. Um, so definitely talk to your lenders. Don't just let it go. Um, you know, that, 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 that's if not going to feel like it. you're starting to feel a squeeze. You are. So look into it sooner rather than later. Yeah. So many times there's more options. The sooner you look into options yeah. than if you wait. It's um, a lot easier to fix little... when it's a small leak than when it's a giant. Absolutely. Crack. 
I saw a little uh, emoji hand. Someone had a question. I'm more than happy. I think that was Bianca. Questions and more. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Um, I was going to ask, um, would you, because there was another thing that I learned where you can actually call up the lender and ask if you can like, or write a letter um, requesting if you settle on a certain amount, do you advise doing that? Like, for instance, you have like an outstanding balance of like 250,000 and you settle on 50 if you have that amount to pay or whatever the case may be, would you advise um, reaching out to a lender and requesting that type of, um, I guess, financial alleviation if you can't keep up with the payments? That's a great question and it depends on the debt and it also depends on if how far in delinquency you are because typically uh, those organizations are only going to negotiate when they feel like there's absolutely no chance that you're going to pay that debt. And typically that's when they're already not receiving payment. Um, so, but it, again, as Felipe mentioned earlier, it's never a bad idea that if things are starting to get bad, that you can, that you call your creditor to discuss it. Um, again, you, you, it is definitely, if, if this is something that it's been a, an outstanding debt, it's been something you haven't paid for a while, especially if it's a third party and it's not the original creditor, um, then they've already paid pennies on the dollar for that uh, or you know half of the, the, the debt. So they are willing to negotiate. Typically, the original creditor uh, is typically is not going to negotiate until there's reason to negotiate. And if it's a particularly large amount, you do have to uh, realize there could be a it's very big tax, tax implications. implications. Yeah. Um, that for a given amount can be uh, considered income. income. And then when that tax uh, filing time comes, it can really uh, mess up your tax situation. So you wanna be aware of that as well. Um, Correct. Great question. Any other questions? Very good question. But it's also a good idea to talk if you have a CPA, if you have somebody that does your taxes that helps, it's a good, be very, it's very smart to have that discussion with them and what they think the implications are because especially when it comes to taxes, um, they can get you through that much. They know the laws much better. Speaking of taxes, I gotta do my taxes. Uh, I have an appointment yeah. next week. I know. Yeah, I just did mine. <laughs> so you have the different uh, um, uh, resources available. You can always continue learning. Um, not with my dog barking in the background. I apologize. You can't hear it. Oh, really? She's no, like it was like a garbled thing. It almost sounded like a weird internet deal. All right, so uh, continue learning our podcast, Talk Wealth to Are Me. Are there any other questions, though, before yeah, we jump questions? out? All right. Cool. Yeah, my dog was doing good. Then the trash guy pulled up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she was like, oh, yeah, something to bark at. Oh, uh, real world we, problems. Have, we have our uh, podcast called Talk Wealth to Me middle of a rebrand so we'll be coming out with new episodes here um shortly keep an eye out for that but you can always catch up all kinds very of very shortly topics. super um, excited yeah all kinds of different topics all kinds of different. some will apply to you some won't we got lots of them on inflation uh credit card debt all kinds of different things and then if you liked this i uh, we'll be back in two weeks for Gaming and financial literacy. I'd love to say that I came up with this topic idea, but it was actually Katie uh, who came up with it. But I'm all for it. I'm looking forward to it. It's kind of why I put it near my birthday. It's like my own little thing. I, I talk about video games, or not just video games, but games and money, financial literacy. How do we connect them? Some more than others. Uh, some are designed for teaching financial literacy. And then others, just by their nature, you end up learning um you know, and, and having your nine-year-old uh upset at your four-year-old because he caused him to go bankrupt on monopoly um <laughs> and yeah gamification is is real yeah. in a positive and a negative way so uh if, if 
come on back and, and, and register for gaming and financial literacy next week. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca. If you do have any other questions, you think of any other uh, afterwards, um, you know, don't forget, don't uh, hesitate to reach out and let us know. <laughs>